When I started my handmade business, I had big goals. I wanted to make a living selling my handmade jewelry, but still I wasn't sure how to reach my goal. In the beginning, I was barely scraping by, even though I was working a full-time schedule. But today, my first business, Tiny Hands, makes $200,000 in sales each year, and the other two businesses that my husband and I have make a couple of million each per year. And here's how I did it and how you can do it too. My name is May Park, and I help makers, artists, and designers earn a living selling their handmade products online. Now, as all online business owners know, the first few years are really hard, right? We've made so many sacrifices to pursue our dreams, and there's a lot of pressure to meet a certain level of success and fast, right? Because if we don't start making money from our shops soon, we can't pay our bills, and we have to give up our dreams to get a real job. That's a lot of stress. And the more stressed we feel, the more disheartened we might be when our sales aren't happening as fast as we would like them. When I started Tiny Hands, I poured everything I had into my business. I worked a part-time job. I did freelance web design just so I could have extra money. My first year, I was working a full-time schedule on my business and I made $9,000 in sales for the whole year. And when you do the math, that's $4 an hour, far less than I was hoping for. But guess what? I kept going and I kept believing in my dream and that I could do it somehow, even though I didn't know how yet. So over the next few years, I took every course I could find on marketing and business. I reached out to social media influencers, magazine editors, and bloggers, even when it made me uncomfortable, just to see if they would feature my jewelry. I'm not a person without fear. In fact, I struggle a lot with anxiety, limiting beliefs, and negative thoughts. I'm afraid of stepping outside my comfort zone or because I have this fear of making someone angry but I'm constantly working on all of those things. I've done all kinds of therapy. I buy coaching sessions so I can learn from other people who have been there and done what I want to do. I'm a huge believer in investing in yourself and that includes education and expanding your skill set and knowledge. Because look, I am not special. I'm not super smart or anything, but I realize that I don't know everything and that I have a lot to learn. And I attribute so much of what I've accomplished to prioritizing my investment in myself. Do you know what happened when I put myself out there despite being scared? I got more confident. The more I knew about business, the better I felt about what I was doing, and I was no longer too nervous to take risks. I felt good about what I was doing, and that motivated me to do more. See, people make this assumption that something needs to happen before you can take any action. We like to wait until we feel inspired or ready to make that big scary leap. The secret is you become inspired and ready by doing, taking that first step even if it feels scary or hard. And then you take the next step and the next, and then before you know it, you have momentum. Basically, I faked it till I made it. And you know what? I never really understood what that meant until I was on the other side of that. And here's what I mean by fake it till you make it. I worked every single day, even when I didn't feel like it. And because of that, I got things done. For example, I pitched my products to celebrities and magazines, but who was I to reach out to them? I was barely making any sales. I'm not like a big brand. What if no one liked my jewelry? What if it sucked? <sighs> but I did the work anyway, and I took action to send that email out even if I didn't know the answers to all the questions. I acted as if, even though I was afraid of being rejected, I did the work. And it wasn't just one time, I did this over and over again. It didn't work all the time, but that's the other secret, right? This is like a muscle you build as if you're going to the gym to work out. The more I did this, I increased my likelihood of something happening. And when I actually got the result I wanted, it's validation for me in my work and that I am doing something right. So I keep doing more of it and I kept getting more positive results and that loop helped me grow my confidence. But it all started with taking that first step. Listen, I know just do it is easier said than done, right? You're bound to have days where you feel bogged down, tired, or afraid to try. I'm not saying self-care isn't important, it is, but this video isn't about self-care. When you start and you've got momentum, things start falling into place your business will grow. And that's one of the best feelings in the world. You didn't get into this because you thought it would be easy, right? Maybe you got into this because 
You want it to share your passion with the world, or you want it to see your hobby become something bigger than that. Whatever the reason why, get really clear about that. And if the reason is strong enough, it can motivate you to take action even on days you don't feel like it. Next, I started to really understand the relative value I contribute to other people. When we're all starting out, we don't really know our place in the world, right? We're not sure how to price our products. It feels scary to price it really high because who do we think we are, right? So like a lot of other creatives, I started pricing my products and services at a really low rate. But unlike a lot of other creatives, I started to increase my pricing over time. And in fact, I know my prices tend to be higher than other people's because the more confident I became, the more I realized how much value my work impacts other people. Not everyone can make the jewelry I make, nor do they have the time to learn and practice like I did for years. But people still need birthday presents. And can you imagine how disappointed the birthday girl would be if she didn't get her gift? The stakes are pretty high. That's where my jewelry comes in. The moment I stop looking down at my own work and start seeing it from the lens of other people who need what I sell, the easier it became to charge prices based on that value and not based on just cost of material supplies and the time it took to make the product. This is a pretty big mindset shift I had to make. And don't get me wrong, it took me years to get there. I'm not expecting you to just tomorrow just understand what I'm saying. But just like any comfort zone, this is also a muscle you have to train. People almost always undervalue themselves and the products they make. But as you've probably started to see the pattern in this video, believing in yourself is a huge part of the puzzle. Another thing I did was I never gave up. I never quit and I persisted despite meeting rejection after rejection. I have sent out so many email pitches that never got responded to. I've even gotten people telling me to stop emailing them and saying bad words to me. I've done craft shows where I didn't make any money. I've gotten negative reviews for my products. I've had to refund customers. I've had China factories rip off my products. I've had months where I didn't make any profit at all. There have been so many low lows, but you know what? I think these are all just tests. How much do I really want this to work? And more than not just giving up, I troubleshoot and I problem solve. When something doesn't work, I analyze the situation, I collect data and find out why so it doesn't happen again in the future. So over time, my business just gets better and better. Don't think my businesses all started perfectly. They all got shaped and molded to become the money-making machines they are today because its foundation got stronger, so it became easier to make sales. So much of running a business is about pivoting and sticking it out long enough for you to see the fruits of your labor materialize. What are some of your business goals? Let me know in the comment section and like this video if you found it helpful or inspiring and subscribe for more handmade business tips. Stay tuned for the next video to start.